Good morning and welcome to the USA Cares podcast. I'm your host, Matt Castor. I am joined as always by Alexis Becker. Good morning, Alexis. Good morning, Matt. Welcome back. Thanks. A big shout out to all of our sponsors who make this podcast possible and make USA Cares to do what we do for our veterans. Uh, Companies like Black Rifle Coffee, Chick-fil-A, Schneider Electric, Cruise Customs Flags, our good friends at the Bourbon Road Podcast who have been promoting us along the way and helping us with our fabulous gala coming up on July 23rd. And of course, our good friends right here at the Speakeasy Podcast Network, the best in the business, speakeasynetwork.com. So check them out. Uh, Alexis, we've got so many things coming up. I could fill the whole episode with just all the things happening around the country. Uh, Just such a movement with all these chapters and people need to check them out. Yeah. Yeah. They so, sure do. <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> so usacares.org, uh, you can go to events and learn all about what we're doing around the country. Get involved today. Definitely reach out in your community. Let's help some veterans together. If you are new to the USA Cares podcast, this is a podcast all about helping our veterans, all about um, just being there for them when they need us. USA Cares assists veterans fa- and their families when they're in crisis. So in the last 10 years, we have stopped more than 4,000 evictions of veterans. We have kept them in their homes. We are keeping the families together. And that only happens with support from people like you. So please go to usacares.org, hit that donate button, and become a donor today. So we've had a string of guests on that have been so powerful and so strong and just some really, really good stories, uh, including our first Coast Guard episode, which was pretty pretty amazing. So I was really excited about that. But... Today, um, I really don't want to waste any more time yammering on because we've got a really (laughs) awesome guest and uh, I want to get and introduce him. So um, this is a gentleman that I met through uh, a board member of ours actually down in Texas, down in Austin, Texas, and uh, made this introduction. And uh, I started reading a lot about him, learning about him, and uh, his story is pretty powerful. And so excited to welcome on to our podcast for the first time, the founder and CEO of Redline Steel, an Army veteran. Mr. Colin Wayne. Good morning, Colin. Hey, good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being on. Really, it's an honor for us. Uh, You seem to be everywhere. It's really not hard for me to read about you or to to find your story. And uh, so we're just excited. I know your passion for for the military and for our veteran community. And uh, so really, we're just honored to have you on. Thank you. And the, the feeling's mutual. Love what you guys are doing and what you stand for. And that's that's really important to me. You know, back, I used to own a supplement company before I sold it to a venture capital group, and the name was Integrity Driven. Mm. And so just that alignment of those core values of doing what's right, even when nobody's looking, is, is very important. So um, with what your nonprofit is doing and, and uh, you know, hearing about the ed- eviction uh, stops, that are taking place yeah. because of your support and because of the donors across the nation that's making that impact. It's, it's powerful. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's something that, that hits all of us very, very personally. Um, something we're, we're proud to do. Uh, mm-hmm. We understand the, the impact that uh, a life of service can have uh, and the suicide rate is as much too high. So it's our goal to, to get that way down and take away those stressors that can contribute to that. But um, I think the first time I saw you, Colin, was on an interview on Kelly Clarkson, and you were with yeah. Megan Fox, and you were you were um, uh, on Memorial Day weekend, and really doing some amazing things. And that was the first time I really heard your story uh, of your service. And I was going to see if you don't mind, would you share a little bit about kind of how you how you got into the military and and kind of what that career was like. Absolutely. So I enlisted in the military at uh, an early age, like literally a week and a half after my 17th birthday. Wow. So I got emancipated, uh, ended up joining as military police officer and served from 2006 to 2013. Um, made staff sergeant at 22 years old and ended up on my third tour of duty um, in Afghanistan. I got injured and that's what transitioned my career uh, from the military into uh, becoming a fitness model. Yeah, and this was a this was a a pretty big injury. I mean, this was this was something pretty significant. It was. It I should be dead, uh, honestly. Mm. And even the medic that pulled me out of the building said the same thing. So I was in the Paktika province, right on the Pakistan border, 
at a small, very small base. It, it should have just been a cop, a contingency outpost. <laughs> wow. Um, like 85 people on the entire base. But uh, think of it like uh, mountain ranges on all sides but one, and we're down in the middle of the valley. And Pakistan, mm -hmm. we had these uh, NAIs, named area of interest, that they would constantly uh, rocket us from. And because they knew that we had brigade level clearance to fire back. So they they would shoot it all, all the time. And um, we had several people get killed on the base. It was a rough, it was a rough, uh, they shut it down. And I was one of the first ones that su survived at that. I'm here to tell my story, which is why Memorial Day to me is so important because it's not about me as a veteran. This yeah. day, that day, Memorial Day, it's not a day to monetize. It's a day to honor and pay tribute to the family members across the nation that are not here. I, I was a father at the time. My son was only about two years old and I, he would have grew up without a dad and to know what I know now and that, that I did survive and God saved me for a reason is a catalyst to why, why I believe so many doors are opening. We've got a mission statement at the business that I own called Redline Steel and it's people over profit. Uh, and, and I believe that wholeheartedly, that, that same intro, integrity, yeah. doing what's right when nobody's looking. Memorial Day with Kelly Clarkson and Megan, and Megan Fox, that was our second annual. Now we're doing our third annual, um, which we've got some exciting collaborations to discuss as well. But yeah. uh, that, that, that specific event with Kelly Clarkson show and Megan Fox is, um, one day in particular that it's not about me as a veteran it's it's yeah. about the family members of the fallen and those and just be a voice for the voiceless well it's it's really amazing and I, I appreciate your humility and i know you try to make it about everybody else but but we certainly appreciate you as well and um i think the work at these memorial day events uh is is incredible and the number of people you've been able to help and recognize in that process uh, is, is really something. So, um, uh, certainly appreciate that. Um, and then you, I'm always fascinated, Colin, anytime we have a veteran on and they talk about coming through their career, there's so many different directions of veterans go. Now you've chosen some interesting directions and you know, the, the fitness career, the fitness model career was definitely one of them that was right out of the military, right? It was like, so in Afghanistan, what I, I left out was I got blown up in a gym. So I was working out. Oh, really? And okay. I, I, I nearly got killed. And so it was also like um, one of those things that I feel like it almost killed me, but it also saved my life. And, and, and to those that are struggling out there, like um, from, a you know, PTSD or something that's challenging, like physical fitness is such a, a powerful role that it can play. And, you know, I could have been like a lot of people and said, uh, been afraid to go back into a gym, but I, I, I use this as kind of a catalyst to say, I'm not afraid to go back into something that almost killed me. And I actually, uh, about 14 months after the, I uh, got blown up, I was on the cover of, uh, Iron Man Australia. And that was my first ever magazine cover. And, and at the time you were just trying to survive years. after that injury to who to, to think a year later that, that that's happening. It's incredible. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it is honestly, it's, um, I would have never believed that. And when I started, when I was pivoting out of the military, I started a Facebook page and, uh, within six months had over a million followers and I'm from Alabama, like just a small town and, <laughs> yep. and, uh, it's, it's turned into something much larger, um, because of that. So. Unbelievable. Well, and we talked to, you know, some, some folks that they'll come out of their military career and, and the different forms of therapy that they take, but they find something. So whether it's art, some people, it was music, some people, it was, um, Outdoor just activities. being, yeah, just yeah. being out. What was the, the guest he used the term dirt church, Yes, you know, being mm -hmm. out and that was his church being outside. And, and so, I mean, there's so many different ways to go and, and it's so important to find that thing, uh, that, mm -hmm. that brings you that, that piece. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, so you come out, you, you, kind of, you do the, the model thing for a while and, uh, you know, how did you get to the point where now you're in Redline Steel, where are you starting up Redline Steel? Because that's a, that's a major, major step. Yeah, it is. It's, and it's so different. So I was raised in a split home. 
like a lot of families mm -hmm. across America. And uh, my mom primarily raised me for context. My brother, he enlisted in the military and uh, he was a captain and ended up uh, retiring about two years ago. Uh, but he was, he was a father figure to me. And he has three kids as well. I've got three kids. Uh, at the time when I started Redline Steel in 2016, uh, I only had my son and I had just got married. And I, I was looking at the world different. At this point, I was 26 years old and I, was, I wanted to ensure there was stability. And, you know, when, when you're, I look at things as uh, limits of liability, like I'm my own liability as a, as a business owner. If I'm a sole, sole founder, something happens to yeah. me, what's that look like for the business and my family? Um, what is, and, and as a fitness model, I was looking at it from, I'm married, I have a son. What does that look like if I got into a car accident um, or if corporate sponsors cut cut me off without, and now I'm living kind of a lifestyle. I'm a high school dropout. I joined the military a couple <laughs> days after I was 16, a week later, 17, joined the army. Wow. So like, I don't have a contingency or back out plan, but I've, I believe in myself enough that I'm not afraid to take on challenges. And so yeah. the, the reason I started Redline was I, um, I saw a market opportunity and I started as just wanting to be a customer. And I wanted to buy a baseball uh, for my son. It was a baseball player to go on his, uh, in, inside of his room and it would have his name engraved in it. And there was this baseball player silhouette. He was swinging a bat just like this. And uh, it had, um, I wanted to put his name in it. His name spelled unique. So C-A-R-S-Y. And so you mm -hmm. can't go anywhere and buy this type of stuff, not even <laughs> yep. at little souvenir shops. And I, I tried to get a quote on Google. So I was searching and I could not find anybody. There was like Etsy shops, but nobody for paid advertisement. And coming from like a marketing social media background, um, when I transitioned out of the military, it started to trigger like, wow, this is a huge market opportunity. I know like all across the nation, you drive into neighborhoods, they have stuff on their front door with their name. Where are they getting that stuff from? And so, yeah. I mean, honestly, if you think to yourself, like, where are they getting? From? So six and a half years ago, 2015, I was, this was a blue ocean market, zero paid advertisers within the metal uh, home decor space, uh, specifically within customizable niche. And so at first, all I wanted to do is just get a quote from someone else. And then the second thing was I, I made a, uh, I wanted to partner with the local company and uh, as an actual investor. And then mm -hmm. the day we are supposed to uh, actually sign the partnership agreement after about four months uh, back and forth, uh, he backed out. And so it lit an wow. internal fire that I'm going to take this on. I don't know how to make it. My mom raised me like this is a plus screwdriver. It's not a Phillips. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I still don't know much about yeah. manufacturing and even basic tool knowledge. I, but but, you know, this is such like you learn so much about yourself uh, along the journey and along the way that I think that a lot of people are afraid to get started. And, and in my mind, it's jump off with both feet and hope you swim. I'm just going <laughs> to keep moving forward. I'm going to figure it out. And there's really smart people out there that you can hire and put them into specific roles and, and see it to fruition. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I loved, I love to hear the way my, my, I'm somebody that my faith is really important to me. And I love to see the way that God uses people and leads them through their life and takes them in directions that they never imagined they could go. And you look back and say, that's the only way I got here. So uh, I love that. I think it's incredible. Um, what kinds of products does Redline make for those so who haven't heard of it? Yeah. So redlinesteel.com is uh, the uh, website. We've got home decor products specifically with uh, steel, aluminum, canvas, but it's primarily like wall art decor. So if you wanted yeah. like an address sign, like you can't go to Walmart, Home Depot, any large retailer, Hobby Lobby and get one, you're gonna get stickers to put on your mailbox. So still hmm. to this day, there's nobody that's like mass market. Um, so there's there's an idea for some uh, investors Absolutely. out there. Absolutely. Like, to start one of these businesses. You can, I don't look, oh, by the way, I don't look at myself as like, I don't care about competitors. I bet on myself. 
because I believe awesome. that wholeheartedly, I, I bet on humanizing the brand to the point where people buy because of what we believe in and the culture and what we embody as a value system and a yeah. value exchange. So people can create, there's, I've got competitors that create incredible products. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're high quality as well, but like we serve a bigger purpose and we work with incredible nonprofits. We, we give without the expectation of a return and vicariously God, if you will, returns it times 10. And yep. that's why like, for me, it's, it's, um, this is a catalyst of something much larger that I don't know what's in store. That's awesome. Well, and that's, you know, you, people can sense your passion. They, they hear you in an interview, they see you on TV, they, they can sense passion and they, it, it really triggers something and they want to know more and they start looking at the products you have, they find great products and, and they buy. So, uh, really incredible. I know you've done some work uh, recently with our chapter in Texas, and uh, you've got some some products that are going to be at their event, uh, at their Trace Bravo event coming up on, help me, Alexis. May 26th. May 20th. I was totally going to get that date wrong, so I'm so <laughs> glad you said that. Um, so, so thank you for that. And I know you've worked with a lot of just phenomenal nonprofits uh, over the years, and uh, so really, really incredible. What's uh, through this career? So we've talked kind of your military career, uh, a little bit about the modeling career, a little bit into Redline Steel. What is that moment? What is that pivotal moment in your life? What is that where, where that take charge moment? Was it the injury or was there something or somebody in your life that kind of gave you that boost? So my first saying ever as a kid that my mom told me was, um, I'll do it myself. And I've always had that mindset of uh, very stubborn, but very strict on myself. My accountability structure is extreme. Um, yeah. What I, I would say who I look up to is Nick Saban. Uh, mm. And, and I'm right. an Alabama fan from Roll Alabama. You just like, made Alexis's <laughs> yeah. whole day. Yeah. Roll My time. husband's a grad. So. <laughs> yep. Even if he was with like Auburn, it wouldn't matter. Yeah. Like a and big shout out to Tommy Tuberville, um, also a personal friend of mine for uh, becoming senator. So, but yep. roll tide. And I got to put that out there. <laughs> uh, but Nick Saban's mindset, right? Like his mentality of it doesn't matter if you're up 100 points and we missed a tackle, we missed a field goal, we have work to do. And you're always looking ahead. Like it doesn't matter about what we've done, what we've accomplished. And in the recruiting standpoint, to look at people in eighth grade, ninth grade, like, all right, this is someone to pay attention to. This is where we're at right now. But what does this look like road mapping for the next decade, five, 10 years, 15 years? What does that look like? Are people even thinking in that degree from a business? And I know there's a lot of uncertainty mm. uh, right now in today's economic state. But like, if you can have that type of structured mindset that that I call it a win the day the win the day men mentality of, I don't, you know, I'm going to accomplish from the time I wake up, I want to beat my alarm clock. I want to have that mind body connection where you can almost feel a pulse of what's actually happening in your business or in your life, just because you're so connected to it. And that takes yeah. discipline, but it also takes uh, limiting distractions, distractions mm. from what you want to accomplish. And so for me, like, distractions could be not just business related, but quote unquote opportunities, opportunities from uh, s this business venture, or NFTs or crypto that's constantly taking away from the bigger ecosystem play. Like, I think if whatever your goal is, business owners or non, what do you want to do in the next 12 months? Is this achievable? Even if it's n even if other people say it isn't, it's believable if you believe it. No matter what the, you just have to have enough faith within yourself. When I say yeah. that Redline Steel is going to be a billion dollar company, I don't care what other people say or question, it will be a billion dollar company. And it's that type of vision with certainty that manifests creation. Uh, and and I, yeah. I just wholeheartedly believe that um, having... I, I say the three D's distance, direction, distractions, and you have to know the distance to follow no distractions. And then, um, you know, it's, it's 
we're going to uh, manifest it to fruition. So. That's right. Have you been? Have you had the opportunity to, to to kind of mentor other entrepreneurs and work with other people trying to do a similar thing? So I own a mastermind uh, called Founders Mastery, and it's specifically for business owners that are e-commerce owners, like mm-hmm. uh, something that. Um, so we have like minimums to be a part of it. I, I, I'm, you know, I know we didn't discuss any of this, but my my thought process is I want the people in the room to the left and to the right to leave their ego at the door and to come in with a learning student mindset that I can learn not just from me as the owner of the mastermind, not just the subject matter experts that I bring into the room, but to the person sitting to the left and to the right, because that it cultivates such a learning knowledge and that's, that's really, and it's a very, very small group. For me, it's never been about money. It's I, my mission statements, people over profit it has nothing to do with it. It is a, I want to learn from people that are, I don't care if they've only done a million dollars in annual revenue or 50 million, it makes no difference. There's takeaways uh, that I can, uh, the, the, the big thing for me is, 10, 15 years from now, my vision is that I'll, I'll exit Redline, I'll create a, bench, uh, a private equity group, and we'll focus specifically on um, a demographic women, 35, 65 plus Christian conservative married homeowners. And it'll be a vertical alignment of product of companies or entities that only serve to the left and to the right. And it's vertically integrated. Mm. Whereas if you look at most sharks on Shark Tank, all of them, Lottie Dotty, everybody, they're they're buying random stuff and they're just looking at a PL and balance sheet. Like there's a bigger ecosystem play in my mind. My mind is if I know the end consumer and I can provide value to the left and to the right, as it becomes more challenging for customer acquisition Mm -hmm. or providing value and an ascension ladder, what can I do with this company and this company? They have to have some form of commonalities or they serve no purpose. So if the purpose is providing value to the end consumer, if every company in my portfolio aligns with that avatar focus, then I can serve company A to E, E to G and back, back, you know, and vice versa. So, um, in tandem, they'll work very well together, but that, that's what the yeah. vision is. And have I created it? No, but I'm manifesting it. And that's you're, kind of, you're going to be there. I work. have no doubt you're going to yeah. be there. You sound like one of the most driven people I've ever met. So I think yeah. I have no doubt that you'll get there, but I love the, I love the idea. I mean, anybody can sell a product, but, but keeping the, the people in mind that in consumer in mind, um, your employees in mind is, is so crucial. Yeah. So I love that. So Actually, can I touch on that real quick? Yeah, so please, please. When, when, when COVID hit in March of, you know, 2020, I ended up doing, um, I didn't do a distribution and I redistributed to all of my employees. I paid their house payments for the month of April. Mm. And my challenge to other business owners were to do the same. You know, if imagine if you were on an hourly basis, and something happened that had never happened in your lifetime. Um, what my mindset was, I go to a grocery store, it is chaotic. Um, and you don't know what was going to happen. I'm just thinking back yeah. you know, two years ago, like, what does that look like? And um, I, the only thing that came to my mind was taking care of those that take care of me. And that's kind of family. And that's what we've embodied as a company culture is it's not about you know, I want to make sure my family's taken care of as well, but like, I've got to make sure they're there as well. And I told them if the government shut us down tomorrow, I've got your back. I've got your six, just like we said in the military. Yep. And I've got to, uh, I think that was just such a reassurance and, you know, the performance afterward, like you could see such an uplifting, like, I think at that point, there was a lot of employees that started to kind of put your money where your mouth is. We're giving to a lot of nonprofits as well, but like now it's internal um, and it's not for yeah. something, you know, that's like a publicity thing. Like this right. is just for my employees to make sure that they're taken care of. That's um, leadership. That's, that's how you build a workforce that will run through a wall for you and amen. worries amen. less about the pain and, and more about, I need to be here. So I love yes. that. That's great. Thank you. So, 
a lot of, we, we work with a lot of veterans who are coming out of military, maybe after a 20 year career and try asking that dreaded question, what now? And trying to figure out where their life is going to go. And maybe they take a little time off and, and try to figure some things out. But a lot of them, there's a lot of, uh, of tension. There's a lot of nervousness. There's a lot of despair. There's a lot of, I'm not really trained to do anything, which isn't true. But, but there's always that, that self-doubt. What, what, kind of, what kind of words of wisdom would you give to, to some of these men and women coming out of the, the service? Uh, because so many of them joined after September 11th. And so a lot of those folks are coming out now. What, what, what words of advice would you give to them? What, what I would say, and this isn't to just those that serve 20 years, but, you know, you become kind of systematized of right place, right time, right uniform, and you need structure and stability. What helps me um, cope with everything that I've experienced from you know, near death experiences, 100 plus combat missions is staying extremely focused and having some type of goal orientation. And like even to the point where I'm in bed at a certain time, uh, I don't drink. I don't, and, and I'm not saying you have to be perfect like mm -hmm. that, but yep. if it's a distraction of what you want to accomplish, just goal set in general. And I think as a military veteran, anybody that's coming, you know, off active duty, transitioning over, working towards some type of stability um, and keeping yourself busy, keeping your mind occupied, it could be art, just. It could be something, uh, like you said, picking up guitar, working out, yeah. those little things that you're not sitting there distracted by a TV or thinking about what happened in Afghanistan or Iraq or, you know, and I think just staying busy, it helps me tremendously. And having yeah. some type of goal where I can look back and say, man, we've we've done some, some stuff. And that's um, awesome. That's, yeah, that would be my advice is just to stay busy, but like, like actually work towards something. So you feel accomplished because yeah. there's nothing worse than just sitting there, you know, and you don't know what to do. And you, that's where things really trigger where you don't really have a lot going on. So just find busy work to get you busy, do it. Your like DIY projects. I mean, start, yeah. start a side hustle that could turn into, um, you know, something that could pay dividends at Absolutely. the end of the day. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, finding that sense of purpose is so important, yeah. uh, even even if it's only a temporary sense of purpose, but but finding that thing to do uh, to get through it. So, well, you uh, you have been kind enough and your company's kind enough to to reach a hand out to USA Cares this year and, uh, and help us. Uh, we are so excited to work with you guys. And uh, we just know we get to we get these phone calls every day from veterans who the sheriff's at my door. They're going to kick us out. We need help. And we know firsthand how much this is going to do working together and, and the people that we're going to be able to help together all over the country. So uh, couldn't be more excited to work with you guys. Um, I, I, I get your passion. I get your energy. Just a just, uh, people first mentality and, and absolutely love that. And, and we want to support you guys along the way as well. So thank you so much for all you guys are doing. Absolutely. As I say, yeah. I got your six. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Thank you so much. Uh, is there is there anything else you want to make sure you mention today on on this podcast to our listeners? Any any uh, last words of of wisdom to give them? You know what what I would say is just you know find your why. You you hit on purpose, and I think that's so important. To I had an identity shift a few months ago, and going through like the steel industry mm -hmm. in particular is up 470 plus percent within 14 months. That's unprecedented. You wow. can't plan for that. Yeah. Um, you know, even though we shipped a million plus cust uh, orders within the last year, mm. we still got an increased rates on shipping. That's not normal. Like it, in theory, the more volume, the cheaper yeah. things should be. What I, my identity shift was, I started to learn more about What's the bigger purpose? And, and remember, I said, I want to be a billion dollar company, billion dollar brand. I'm not I, I, I'm starting to realize that there's something more important. And that's also my family and taking care of myself and making sure that I make time for my son's baseball practice yeah. and finding that balance. Um, I, I don't believe that there's such thing as a perfect work life balance. I, mm -hmm. I, I truly don't. But I do think that prioritizing what your purpose and your why is um, 
and ensuring that there is the bigger picture is being looked at holistically. So you can look back without regret. So you can look back 10, 15 years ago and say, thank God that I did that. Or man, I wish I would have done that. Things would have been so different. Yeah. Today is a new day and you have the rest of your life to make an impact and to make a change. And it's what you do today that's going to impact the next year, five years, 10 years. And if you live that win the day mentality, that Nick Saban mindset, yeah. that I can do anything that I put my mind to, it's it's it'll come to fruition. And you just have to believe it and, you, you know, manifest it to the world. That's so great, man. Thank you so much. So much. I, I think, you know, I hope I'd encourage anybody who's listening, uh, check out redlinesteel.com. Check out the great products that they have. Um, look up Mr. Colin Wayne and all the, all the, the encouraging things that, that he's saying. Um, really, I'm, I'm, I know it's making an impact on a lot of people. So thank you for, for working with USA Cares. Uh, we're going to continue to sing your praises all year long. So uh, it, it means a lot. Absolutely. Thank you for having me and as well as just anything you need. I've got your back, seriously. Truly. Yeah, I, I thank you, man. Thank you so much. All right. We'll talk soon. Well, Alexis, another good one. Yeah. So I, a big, big shout out to Redline Steel. Um, I, I can't express how excited I am to work with them, uh, hopefully around Memorial Day. And uh, look for more things to come on that. Look for some announcements that might be coming up. Yes. So uh, it's really, really exciting. But when you come across somebody like Colin, somebody whose passion is so evident and just wants to be there for their people. Yep. It's almost contagious. It is. Not almost. It is. Contagious. It is. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, very inspirational. So thank you to Colin and team. Uh, we look forward to this year. Uh, if you want to learn more about how to help veterans in your community, check out usacares.org. Check out the chapters that are around the country and get involved. If there's not a chapter near you, reach out to us. Well, let's get one started. But uh, a, lot of, a lot of people out there need a lot of help right now. Um, USA Cares has a 100% increase in housing assistance requests right now. We have, uh, Colin mentioned the increased cost in steel in their business. Kind of similar to what we're facing right now. The cost to keep somebody in their home is up 250%. We've got some real needs right now. And uh, so we, we really need everybody to pitch in. So thank you to everybody, to all our supporters, to all the companies who are really stepping up all over the country. Uh, thank you so much. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make this podcast part of your weekly routine. We'd love to, to spend some time with you every single week. So from Alexis, from me, from everybody at USA Cares, thank you so much. And we look forward to meeting with you next week.